have this existential choice in education. Do we put our priority on engaging and inspiring our students and teachers or testing and measuring them? And when somebody says we need to do both, I say you can't do both. You know, if you once you start putting numbers out in newspapers, in performance review, once it's a numbers driven education system, the inspiration and engagement is gone. When you do an experiment, we know the, the, very, uh, uh, the process of observation does change what you're observing. So I'd be very curious what your thoughts are about that. I think part of what you're observing is the confidence that the kids have in, in, with self-expression and with speaking to adults and speaking to cameras. And I see that here as well. You know, today I had lunch with four fellows in the fellows program and that every one of them went down and talked about what they were doing and it was with such incredible poise confidence so articulate and that's what happens when you activate people and allow them to realize their potential and treat them with respect and give them you know the opportunity to 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 uh, have high expectations of them and let them live up to them you know we just so underestimate i think what students and and people are capable of doing if you give them permission to um be be creative and collaborative and so i think the film in, in some ways i mean i didn't make the film so I, i'm just speculating but that's what we're seeing as well it's not just that the walls were open and that the kids were used to having people come by but that they're really they have self-confidence that they wouldn't get in any other way except to be trusted and allow to direct their own learning like they are. What I'm wondering is, why are we not seeing it on a larger scale a lot of time? You know, there are sparks and embers of great learning going on in all schools across our state. How do we turn them into a bonfire? And, and what I find is, just as in, let's higher ed, right? There's evergreen. And, you know, regarding the question of sort of why so slow to change, I think it's a very, very complex one. I mean, we're talking about an you know, institution that's, you know, roughly a little over 100 years old in, in this country that's got sort of rooted in all sorts of things. Um, I really feel like right now there's a there's an ongoing battle over sort of our, the common sense understandings about education, particularly K-12 public education in this country. Um, and there's a sort of uh, sort of very stereotypical quote unquote American sort of pragmatism about, about numbers and efficiency. Like there's a whole framing around education that we just cannot seem to let go of. Um, and, but the thing is this, you know, for the folks that I work with, I mean, I, to put it very bluntly, I also feel like we're sort of outgunned. It's very interesting to see, like, take any of the, you know, various state legislatures across this, co this country, they're, like, those, a lot of those folks' vision of education is just, is just this narrow thing. They come from a particular sector of the business community, too. Um, and they just won't, like, hear any, like, I just feel like they don't hear anything outside of a particular paradigm. I hear people constantly saying, you know, K-12 education will not change until college entrance requirements change. I know Evergreen's completely different. I didn't go to Evergreen, my husband did, and I love what Evergreen stands for, but, mo but most colleges, the, the majority of colleges, still have these requirements that rely on an index score, which is your GPA combined with your you know, standardized test score, and so then high schools feel this responsibility to prepare their kids for these tests, and we at the middle school, so it's just this cycle. So how do, how did these kids at High Tech High, 98% of them, get into colleges without going through those, jump, jumping through those hoops? And what have you seen the influence on higher education? Uh, I mean, I think you're, you're just, you're really stating the problem. And I agree with what you said and it's it's a very scary situation because it's this huge catch-22 and who's going to break the cycle and I tend to agree I mean you can blame the parents you can blame the system you can blame the standardized testing companies um, I don't think there's any one culprit I think it's a whole system of, of you know interrelated dependencies that are wrong um, but I do believe, like Ted, that it's going to be broken through the economy. And I think that's, to me, what the film 
What's different about this film from other films is that it's really stating this economic problem, that it is unsustainable to um, our economy that we're turning out people who don't have the right skills for the times. So it's, it's not gonna be an easy fix, um, but I do believe that it's gonna just work out eventually, and it's gonna be painful, and it's gonna be messy. And I think that regardless of whether it's the, the purpose is to earn money or the purpose is to just be fulfilled human beings, that this approach is the better approach.